In the last tutorial, we discussed JavaScript loading strategies as they apply to browsers. We talked about how and when JavaScript files are loaded and techniques for placing the script tag. If you need to review that tutorial, you can find a link in the description section of this tutorial. In this tutorial, we are going to add to that discussion by talking about what is sometimes referred to as lazy loading. Welcome to another tutorial from All Things JavaScript where we help bridge the gap between novice and expert. Lazy loading is a technique where you only load the JavaScript code that is required to get your page working, thereby allowing the user to begin interacting with the page as soon as possible. Then once the entire page is loaded, you use JavaScript in the background to load the remaining JavaScript file or files that will be needed for the page to do everything that may be required based upon the user's interaction. So that is the concept. Save on page loading time by only loading necessary JavaScript. Once the page is up, load the remaining JavaScript in the background. Let's look at how that's done. So let me show you what I have set up here. The HTML file that we're going to be working with is the one that I showed at the start of this tutorial. This one right here. Right now, I only have the app.js assigned to it. Here's app.js right here. We'll talk about that in just a minute. But I also have another JavaScript file. Right now, all I have is a console.log statement in it. That's enough to allow us to see what's going on. And it simply logs. Now we have loaded the next JS file. So here in app.js, I have an event listener and I'm listening for DOM content loaded. That was a concept we talked about in the previous tutorial. So when the DOM is loaded, I then invoke this function, this anonymous function. And what it does is it grabs the head tag using query selector. And then we have a load.js function. And this function takes a parameter. SRC and this is the source of the JavaScript file we want to load. So what it does is it first creates a script element using create element and then we attach to the dot SRC attribute the path that we've passed in. This is the path to the JavaScript file we want to load. And then we simply append that in this case to the head. That's the one we captured. We could do this with the body as well, but I've chosen to do it to the head. So we append it to the head. And by appending it, that causes that JavaScript file to load. We simply append another script tag is what we're doing. And when that happens, that JavaScript file loads. So here's a console log statement that will allow us to see when this JavaScript file loads. Now, if I want to load a second JavaScript file, I would call load.js and then I'm going to pass in the path to this JavaScript file. Now, over here on the left, you can see where everything is. I have them all on the same level. So the relative path would simply be the name of the file. Here's app.js, here's appnext.js, and here's present.html. So it would simply be the name of the file like that. And that's going to cause that to load. So let me save that. I'm going to open the console here. You can see the first console log statement from our app.js file, first JavaScript file loaded. Right here, this console log statement already fired when I loaded this originally. Now I've added this code here. Let's go ahead and refresh the page. And I'm going to do a empty cache and hard reload on this. And we can see first JavaScript file loaded. Now we have loaded the next JavaScript file. So this console log statement, as we can see, came from app next.js line two, or this one from app.js. So we were able to load that second file after this JavaScript file completely loaded. 
Now here's what I want to do to make this a little more obvious. What I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this event listener. I'm going to comment it out. Now why am I doing that? Well, I want to be able to access load JS from the global object. Because I want to have this loaded and then I want to go to the console and then call load JS to be able to load another JavaScript file. So I want to do it when I choose to, just to illustrate how this works. Now the reason I need to comment out the event listener is because right now the scope of this function is this anonymous function here. So I don't have access to it from the global object. So that's why I'm removing it. Now also I'm going to comment out this line here. I'm not going to call it right away. Let's go ahead and save that. I'll empty cache and hard reload again. First JavaScript file loaded. Now let's first take a look at the head tag. I can do that from the elements tab here. If I open up head, we can see title, link. That's what's a part of the head tag right now. I can also do that in the console because we have a variable head which we've assigned that DOM element to. We can see the same thing there. Now let's go ahead and access load.js. I'm going to pass in the path to that JavaScript file I want to load, appnext.js. We go ahead and press return. It loads and we get the console log statement. Now if we look at head, we can see that there is a script tag assigned to it as well with appnext.js. So that helps you to see that it is the JavaScript file that's loading this additional JavaScript. So we can simply choose to load only the JavaScript we need. That makes for a very small JavaScript file and a faster loading time. Then once that has loaded and the page is already available for the user to begin interacting with, we can load in the background the rest of the JavaScript. So this has been our second discussion on loading strategy, and I hope it was helpful as well. There are other design patterns that deal with loading, but this is probably one of the most common ones. If you found this helpful, hit the like button. Also hit the bell button to be notified about new tutorials. And if you haven't subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button or click the circle link on the left, the one with my face. I release a new tutorial each week. You can click the video link in the center to access another tutorial right away or click the link on the right to visit my website, allthingsjavascript.com, for full courses. Thanks for watching.